Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. Let's start off today's video by saying I am not a true crime expert. I am simply a true crime fan. Take everything I say as a speculation, allegation, or opinion unless it's been proven otherwise in the court of law. I don't want to get sued. All right, we're talking about the Micah Francis case. If you recall, J.P. Miller's ex-wife Allison had recently filed a restraining order on him due to allegations of him having inappropriate relationships with minors. It looks like alleged victims of JP are actually filing lawsuits. Now, are they the same victims that Allison was alluding to? I don't know. Especially if they're minors, their identity is going to be protected. Although we began talking about this case, about the suspicious death of Micah, I believe it's going to end up turning into a much bigger case and revealing a lot of secrets hidden at Solid Rock Church. And while Micah separated with JP in 2023, as her family recalls, Micah was actually really happy. She had moved in with her sister in Kansas. She started attending new churches. She started meeting new people and developing new relationships. However, allegedly, JP convinced Micah to work things out and they got back together. Now, JP hasn't exactly been quiet since Micah's death. When we went over the sermon with Jesse Duplantis, do you remember the little comment that JP said in the background. I want you to get that. See, you need a hundred folds so you can pay cash for all whatever you need to do. Plus, Micah might want something. No, she's okay. It seems to be a common theme with JP about actually not saying the best things about his wife even after she's deceased. You know, you spend uh, seven years trying to keep somebody alive with medicine and um, their family convinces them to stop taking the medicine and so then you spend three months every single day for three months doing whatever you can to keep her alive, whether it's going to family, friends, her pastor, her counselor, um, policemen, judges, doctors. I did everything I could, lawyers, whatever I could to get her her medicine and help her take it. And um, she would not um, take her medicine because her family didn't want her to. Micah's death took off like it did nationally on social media because America, at least most of America, the ones that have the loudest voices are usually people like uh, that like Jerry Springer show. And Micah's family is the epitome of the Jerry Springer show. The people who were saying justice for Micah are raising money for the people who caused Micah's death. They're using the money to sue the man who kept her alive for seven years and did everything he could to help her and his church. I don't even get that. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> Are you blaming us? All I can think of is there's evil in the world. That's all. That's the only, only answer I have is that Satan is at work in the world. Now, when she's off her meds, she's knocked the crap out of me a few times. Um, chipped my tooth, busted my nose, uh, hit me so hard in my ear, it rang for six hours and I lost hearing. But that's when she's off meds. That's when, and, and, and you just take care. It's like an autistic child. When someone you love can't control themselves, uh, you don't really know what to do. Do you hug them really hard and prevent them from moving their hands? Do you run in the other room? For me, I would just kind of run away, you know, I'd leave the house or I'd go lock myself in a room and try to talk, you know, talk her into understanding what's going on and who I am. Oh my goodness. He's got nothing good to say. He just made himself entirely the victim. Oh, she's violent. She, what did she do? She chipped my tooth, busted my nose, uh, hit me so hard in my ear, it rang for six hours and I lost hearing. But that's when she's off meds. Is everything blamed on her medication? After Micah was seen with someone else, when a private investigator hired by JP took pictures of her and sent them to JP, sending him in a rage. On March 11th, that's when he slashed her tires, and there's even a clip of her later at the Honda dealership, and he shows up again, threatening to post these pictures on social media. No way. I'll show you the pictures. Do you want to go to jail? They'll be on Facebook in a few hours. All righty, you'll be in jail in a few hours. She did something she shouldn't have done on March 11th, something she would never in a zillion years do, ever, 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 when she's on medication. <clears throat> she did something that she only does when she's off medication. And that's how I knew that she was mentally ill and needs help was on that day, which was March 11th. And there were some pictures taken of her and somebody else doing something inappropriate. And so when I was taking her mail and she said something, I think I forget what she said, it doesn't matter, but um, I said, well, if you do that, I'm going to put pictures of you and um, that boy up. I had somebody on my staff, a young person that I had to let go. I said, listen, I don't want you doing this anymore. This is something that I don't think is right. I want you to stop. And they looked at me and they said this, uh, well, God's my ultimate authority. I said, what did you, I said, what did you just say to me? They said, well, you know, if God tells me I can do it, then I can do it. 
I said, you work for me. They said, God's my, I said, you know what? Get God to sign your paycheck for you because you're fired. <laughs> so that sermon was on March 24th. So about a week after uh, March 11th, the whole tire slashing incident, we can maybe make an assumption that Michael was seeing somebody from the church. He doesn't specify who, but he says a young person. I think it's fair to ask the same exact questions that John Paul Miller asked. Was he off his medication? For the past four weeks, I've had the most horrible um, battle and horrible time of my entire life. I've never, ever, 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 not even close, uh, been through what I'm going through right now in life. Not even close. Horrible. I mean, horrible so bad. I'm seeing a psychiatrist every week. I'm on 900 milligrams of lithium. I'm seeing a counselor every week. I'm going to inner healing. I'm going to deliverance three times a week with pastors in the area. I'm doing everything I can just to be able to get out of bed. I'm so depressed. I want to die. I'm battling suicidal thoughts. And just to give you a rundown of why his ex-wife Allison might be suspicious of J.P. Miller's actions, you have to keep in mind that Michael was the nanny. But when it comes to Susie Skinner, his alleged romantic interest over the last several years, John Paul Miller wants everyone to stop the attacks. Is that Mike had trusted Susie. Susie's a great friend to both of us, and um, and she she lived a great life, taking care of her husband and kids. And anybody that says anything otherwise about her is horrible. Like talk about me, whatever. Don't talk about somebody who is married to a quadriplegic the entire time took care of him, moved him around all throughout the day and night. She's the breadwinner, she's the homemaker, she's superwoman. Only problem is her husband told you to stay away. You know, gave birth to twins, uh, raised twins, worked full time, only breadwinner. Um, she's a, a good Good one. It seems like things are very one-sided for JP. Like Micah did not have the freedoms that he seemingly had. Again, this is all my opinion. It seems like Chris Skinner could see something between his wife and JP, maybe some flirting going on. It recently came about Christiana, the waitress, who JP was asking bikini pictures from and having very flirty text message conversations. There's something that's been on my mind and on my heart for a few days, but really it goes back a few months to February when this guy came into the restaurant where I've been working and left his phone number on his receipt. To make a long story short, I looked him up and he was the senior pastor of a local church and I thought, let's see what he's about. I mean, JP already had a history of affairs. Even if Micah was out with somebody on March 11th, they had already begun the process of separating and clearly JP had no issue with doing it himself. So he's very hypocritical when it comes to that. Is that enough to set him off and slash her tires? I mean, I think so. I have a TikTok I'm gonna share from the creator Flannery DZ. I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. She just had some commentary about the um, interview with JP. So I just want to see what she says and read a couple of the comments to see what you guys have to say as well. I just watched the first part of Flo's interview with JP Miller. And let me tell you something. I don't like it, JP. Flo, you did a great job. The production's great. I wish you had been able to do it on time, but hey, I get it. It's your first one. It's awesome. Kudos to you. But JP, we are not buying a single piece of the BS that you are spewing because you refuse to own up to a single piece of wrongdoing that you have done that has been documented in multiple court documents. I did finish the entire first part of the interview, but it was painful to listen to you because you are a narcissist, because you cannot even begin to fathom that you are not the victim here, okay? You are not the victim and you need to start owning up to some of your wrongdoings. At least just one of them. That might give you a little bit of credibility. Not a lot, but it'll give you a little bit more. Listening to him speak made my stomach turn. There's something seriously wrong with that man. He cannot take accountability for a single thing. We're picking up on that JP seems to point the fingers at everybody else. I want to listen to the entirety of the interview, but um, 
I'm gonna play this for you as well. And this is talking about when JP was calling the police and saying that the lady who owns the apartments that Micah was staying in, after Micah passed, the lady would not let JP in to get some stuff. He claimed that she just didn't like him and just didn't want him coming in to touch any of her things. And he called the police about it. Were you a little hasty? Were you a little because you because of what happened? Or just can you just clear that image up? Yeah. Cause who's, go ahead. Who's mouse? You said what? Who's mouse? I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh! It, I guess it was a Micah's apartment. It was an apartment. Either, either it was a where Micah was staying, and and it was said that you you went you went to the apartment and you needed you had to leave some people or somebody that you were telling them to let you in because you needed something out of the apartment. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember how many days it was after she passed, but... Yeah, I don't remember when it was. That I'm just talking about that story. Yeah, no, I, yeah, of course I asked for her stuff. She's my wife. No, okay, well, of course you asked for her stuff. So, 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 so that's the answer. You went over there to get her stuff. You didn't go over there to get anything specifically or... or one, that's, that's, I guess that's what we want to clear up. It's not... In, 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 as far as social media, it's not... They're not saying it as you went over there to get her stuff. They thinking you went over there to get something specifically, and you were going crazy about it. Well, I mean, in my, I might have mentioned a few things, like um, she made a sweatshirt um, in January that said Miller 2017. She was so proud of it. She sent me a picture of it. Uh, and she was in the house when she took a picture. I was out eating lunch or something. Uh, so I wanted that sweatshirt. I wanted, um, uh, let's see, she had two diaries. One was um, a, one was poem to me, and the other one was all of our vacations that she write about. Um, I want, oh, she, she just bought us the Bible in, 2000, in, uh, in January of this year. She got a Bible that said Micah and JT on the phone. She was so excited for that. So I was, I was going to get that. Um, let me think. What oh, there's a, there's a necklace she has. Um, <laughs> the necklace she has, it has like a little teeny bubble. And if you look inside of it, there's a naked picture of me. And so I wanted to make sure I got that. <laughs> Someone passed away that I knew had possessions of intimate photos of me. That's not even a photo, by the way. It's in, I think it's one of those little necklaces. I've seen advertisements of them, just based off of how he's explaining it, that like you look inside of it. First of all, can we figure out if that's true? Can we, I don't want to, I, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Does that necklace actually exist or is he just, you know, that's real specific. I think that really does exist. But I can't imagine that Mike, this is all speculation, but I can't imagine, maybe she did, Micah or a family member purchasing her that as a gift except for one person. And I already feel like his ego is so inflated because of all these alleged affairs. I really do think that necklace exists. And just me, I wouldn't tell them where it was. Am I reading too much into that? I just thought that was a little odd. I don't know what he's there for. He obviously seems desperate to get in if he's making that much of a fuss about it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. Even before I filmed this video, I went to Flo Daddy's Flo's TikTok. And maybe I just missed it, but is it under a paywall? Because if it is, that's so icky. I get that my videos are monetized, but I'm not directly charging any of you to get this information. I'm paid through, I'm paid just by the ads that play. I don't know, I didn't, I don't like that. Some of the comments just say he's projecting every little thing he's done wrong onto her. He cannot take accountability. This interview made him look even worse, if that's even possible. Oh, somebody asked, why can't I find it? Talking about this interview with Flo Daddy Flo and JP Miller. It's only visible if you subscribe to his TikTok. It's $2 or so a month. Since when is TikTok like Patreon? Am I missing some, did I miss a whole chapter of TikTok? I can't find his YouTube channel. The only one I found looks like old stuff posted. He posted it for subscribers only on TikTok so far. It's like $2 or so to subscribe here and then you have access to the interview. Uh, I might give him my money. <laughs> it's only a couple bucks, but it's just, the moral behind it and I gotta be honest based off of the small clips that I've seen of this interview so far 
it doesn't really seem like he was very prepared to get being nervous or if it's your first time or whatever, but then, but then, putting it behind a paywall? Let me see if I can get an interview with JP. Anyway, let's take a look at this clip from his sermon on March 11th. So this was, again, the day that he allegedly slashed Micah's tires after maybe he saw her with somebody she wasn't supposed to be earlier that morning. Lord, I just, I just, I just pray for myself today, Lord, and I just... The coat of justice and vengeance with a strong desire to set things right and to punish and avenge the wrongs that people suffer. You can't keep me down. You're putting fuel in my plane. And guess who's not going to be in the plane? My enemies. You have to take a taxi if you want to get there. Has God allowed a catfish to be put in your tank today? I got a shark... Great white shark in my tank. <laughs> it's talking about someone that hurt me. I didn't do it. They hurt me. They hurt me and God's going to deal with me? God, didn't you see what they did? Did you not see what they said about me on Facebook? They hurt me. And you're going to come after me? If there's anger in there, it's going to come out. And it might not. it's going to come out in a way you don't want it to come out. If you hate somebody, you're a murderer. And we're not going to be judged by what, you know, the, the law of Myrtle Beach. We're going to be judged by the law of God. If you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer by God's standards. And, and you don't have eternal life living inside of you. And that word hates there is the word that means continued anger. If you're still angry with somebody. If you're still angry with somebody. Okay? I told you I shouldn't be here today. You just get what you get. Just, just remember. Um, um, I want to give you some things that, because that, sometimes people don't know what's in their heart. Because the Bible says our own heart deceives us. So I want to give you some fruit of having a nasty heart. And then if some of this fruit is in your life, then you'll realize, you know what? I need to take it to the altar. And I need God to... Here's four things that happens uh, when your heart is corroded and you don't even know it. The first thing is this, is you begin to gossip and, um, and speak negatively, especially of the person that did you wrong. The very person that did you wrong, you want to talk about them and just talk, 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 talk. And there's a, there's a really weird... There's a really weird idea that most, a lot of women have. It's so weird that women have this. Christian women think, well, I need somebody to talk to about these people that hurt me. I need somebody to talk to. Oh, you just need somebody to talk to. Just go find somebody to talk to. Okay, <clears throat> let me give you that person's name. That person's name is J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. Okay, that's who you go and talk to. Now, if you want to talk about your own problems, the Bible says confess your own faults one to another, then you can be healed. But if you're going to talk about somebody else, that's a, that's a demon actually right there. When my wife went in the hospital, um, you know, I looked at her phone and I counted over the past two years, 18 people who had texted her and said, if you ever want to talk about your husband, you can talk to me and say anything, anything and I'll keep it confidential. confidential. I hate somebody want to hear what somebody else says about their spouse. I, and two of those 18 were men. If someone wants to call you and say bad things about somebody else, that's a demon talking to you. And the only way to respond is with the word of God. Because see, demons love words that line up with what they want. They cannot stand the word of God. So if anyone calls you and says, listen, I need to tell you about what my husband's doing to my wife. I tell you, you can say, listen, here's what the Bible says you need to do with that. Because that's a demon. So there you go. Okay, I feel much better already. Okay, this is if you react back on Facebook or email or text. If you look at your emails, texts, or Facebook, and someone said something or did something, and you think, you know what, I need to respond and react. You don't even need to react. When there's an enemy out there, don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your time. Okay, it's such a waste of time. That's such a lack of character on them. Just let it go. Worst thing about pastoring, there's a bunch of bad things. I'll leave that TikTok down below if you want to check out the whole thing because this man just goes on and on and on. It does seem like he might be talking a little bit about the situation earlier that morning with Micah, but again, as of right now, it's only speculation. I do want to talk briefly about the alleged crimes of J.P. Miller because you have to remember, he doesn't necessarily have the cleanest history as well. And I did promise to look a little bit into that. Starting with his ex-wife Allison's allegations toward his inappropriate conduct toward minors. Allegedly, Allison knows the identity of the children, but they're too afraid to come forward. But still, Allison went to the police where she was allegedly told no one would believe you. Oh, Richard LaSalle's court date should be... Oh my gosh! which was the guy at Solid Rock who sprayed the protesters in the face. But based off of that guy not even spending a night in jail or anything after five third-degree assaults, I kind of made my own assumption that JP had some sort of pull or power 
over the community. We're going to go back a little in 2016, March 6th, a police report was filed by, again, his ex-wife Allison Miller, saying that she's being stalked and harassed by JP. The report says JP comes to her work, her church, and her home often. JP moved into a house across a lake so he can spy on his ex telling her, quote, the only thing blocking the view is the magnolia tree. End quote. Allison tells police that she's found Epsom salt around the tree, a method JP has used to kill trees at his church, allegedly. The fact that there's Epsom salt around the trees, that's so creepy. 2022, JP uh, sends a text to Sierra Francis, that's Micah's sister, allegedly saying he's on the way to get Micah and he's armed and ready. We went over that 911 call when Micah left JP because allegedly JP asked Micah who she would kiss of like the same gender if she could. I guess Micah answered Charlotte, which ended up sending JP into a rage. So Micah left, stayed with her sister, which just infuriated him even more. So that's when the girls made the 911 call to report the threats that JP was making and to basically scout out the area and make sure that he wasn't actually outside. And currently JP and Solid Rock Church are allegedly under FBI investigation, not just with the allegations that his ex-wife has made about the minors and the lawsuits most likely coming from that, but also his attorney Tom Winslow. There, there could have been some financial crimes involved as well. The the date is unknown on this one, but according to court documents filed by Allison on May 25th, 2024, JP allegedly got the assistance of Myrtle Beach Police Chief, allegedly, to expunge his criminal record. Oh boy, why are we doing that? I just want one more time to sort of break down this timeline for you guys because again there's a lot of moving parts here so as of right now I'm sort of waiting to hear from Richard Losell and see if he actually gets any consequences for the uh, third degree assault charges that are currently held against him and also I want to take a look at these lawsuits that may be coming forward about JP and his inappropriate behavior. Will I pay the two dollars to see the whole interview? Maybe. I'll be honest. I'm a little curious. I kind of want to see the whole thing. I'm not happy about it, but I might. I wanted to break down the timeline, but we're starting at March 11th because if I went way back, we would be here literally forever. March 11th, 2024. This was a really important date. Again, this was the day that JP was accused of slashing Micah's tires because supposedly she was seen with somebody that she was not supposed to be seen with, even though he was already texting waitresses and whatnot. March 12th, JP's request for spousal support was dismissed and there's n there's no current explanation as to why. March 14th, officers visited Micah's apartment regarding report of the tracker found. March 17th, JP tells a story of a pastor whose wife left him for a member of his staff. The Bible says divorce is wrong and if she wanted out, she would have to leave him. Micah Francis accuses her husband of tracking her. Still on March 17th in a Facebook post made by Micah's sister, Sierra, says she keeps her eye on the phone for fear of her sister's safety due to others' behaviors toward her. She goes on to mention the sermon from March 17th and calls out the congregation of Solid Rock Church. Sierra is just bringing up JP's sermon about divorce is wrong and how Micah would essentially be have to be the one to leave him. The next day, March 18th, Micah posted a video encouraging others. She says, quote, I am making sure my heart doesn't have any unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, just forgiveness and hope for the future and peace, end quote. Micah made videos. Uh, she often put music with her videos, so she was just kind of feeling a certain way. I think it may be like a vlog type of style. March 19th, Micah posted her first public Facebook post slash profile picture. Maybe a new account, maybe not. Micah posted a video discussing the challenges she ha was forced with over the past few weeks, month months, and years, mentioning the importance of keeping her circle small and thanking those who have supported her. March 23rd, in a Facebook chat, Micah allegedly tells a friend she no longer goes to Solid Rock and says she's getting divorced and it's for the best. So this was only like a week or two after after 
her tires being slashed. A few days later, on the 26th, Micah called police again and said she found a tracking device on her own vehicle. March 27th, JP filed a police report saying that he's being harassed on social media by his wife, telling police he's quote, worried about his reputation, end quote. And that seems to be the only thing that JP is worried about. March 31st, Micah was baptized at Little River, South Carolina. April 5th, so now we're getting into the month. Micah texts a friend, quote, thank you for your gentle warnings through the years regarding my relationship with JP. I know that you knew I wasn't ready to get out and looking back, your warnings were very helpful when trying to make it through tough life decisions. Definitely have replayed our convos in my head over and over throughout the years and wish there was something I could do to get out. And now I've done it, smiley face, end quote. April 9th, Micah uploaded a Facebook photo with the caption, quote, when terrible, terrible, terrible things happen to you. Oh, I believe this was when JP had uploaded, uh, allegedly uploaded a nude photo of Micah onto social media, but then deleted it shortly after. This is actually shown in the affidavit. She reported that. April 13th, Sierra Francis posts on Facebook saying, quote, don't listen to the false stories being told about her referring to Micah. April 16th, Micah files for spousal support. April 23rd, a hearing notice was sent out for Micah's request. A court date for June 5th was set. April 25th, JP Miller was served with divorce paper papers. April 26th, Micah gets help from friends to pay her car taxes that were due in December. And April 27th, Micah dies of suicide. So it just seems from like the tires getting slashed and it moved very, very quickly. From the police reports to the tracking devices to the filing for the divorce to the going back to saying that she regrets it to being happy once she's out to literally getting baptized once she's separated from JP. Like the irony of that. We'll be keeping our eyes out for any potential lawsuits coming out in the near future regarding JP and any of his inappropriate past behaviors. This case started with the suspicious death of a beautiful woman who seemed to have her life ahead of her. Let me know what you guys think about this below. Also, I've left an email, so if you guys have any other video suggestions you want me to talk about, you can also email me there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next one.